So uh, my name is Yuka Okada. I'm a nurse, the geriatric nurse in working in the Momiji Healthcare Society in Scarborough. So uh, let's talk about uh, we, I, my topic. It takes about uh, 30 minutes and after that, the QA question and answer session, right? Okay, so let's go. So, well, first of all, of course, the COVID-19 that uh, we should talk. So the topic of immunity, immune system has become popular uh, since COVID-19 pandemic outbreak started. At the beginning of the pandemic, it, which is earlier 2020, uh, we, heard a lot of news that the seniors and the seniors in the long-term care homes are affected most. And then we heard uh, many uh, sad news there. So today, uh, by learning how to uh, boost up your immunity will help you to fight, but not only for the COVID-19, infection, but for all of other infectious disease. So it uh, will be, I, I hope it will be helpful for you. So the some scientists say that we need a few more years to develop immunity for COVID-19 virus. Also, we may need a booster shot for the COVID vaccine that we are hearing from the news nowadays, right? So what we can do for now is to make our immune system stronger to minimize developing serious illness from COVID-19 infection because we are not sure that we don't have a medication for it yet. And then vaccine, we have to keep saying that the booster shot. So uh, the uh, strategies in the, in the orange box there, down there, are the most effective way to fight the COVID-19 virus that we know so far. Number one is like a standard, the effective infection prevention control management, which is hand hygiene, wearing a face mask, and then social distancing. It's very popular for everyone now. And then making your own immune system stronger is the weapon, the strategy that you can create. So immunity will become weaker when you get old. The top three causes of death that among Japanese descent that I researched today, uh, I mean, the now recently, and I think it's not much different from the, uh, the North American society as well but those are the cancer, heart attack, and stroke. Those are the most popular cause of this. Popular, yeah, not popular. The, the most of the reasons of death. But, but the people over 60 years old, actually the 40% of them, the cause of death is some kind of infection, which is like pneumonia or the sepsis, over you know, some kind of infection. Then the heart and the stroke and the cancer comes after. So, uh, sorry, this is a typo. It says autoimmune system, but it's our immune system become weaker with aging. We have to know this first. We have three defense mechanisms for the infection, to fighting the infection. Number one is skin, your skin and the mucous membrane. M mucous membrane is in the inside of the nose, uh, could be the inside of the mouth, throat, and the windpipe. Yeah, those are the first defense and it's a barrier between outside the world and then germs that try to come inside of the body, that's the one. If the skin and the mucous membrane is broken and the germs comes into your body, then second defense system is there. It says innate, or I like to say the natural immunity. 
those are the names of the cells, the organisms, those cells that inside of your body, like macrophage, natural killer cells. That's a scary name, but it's protecting you by killing the germs, natural killer cells and the neutrophil, eosinophil, those, those small fields, the, uh, the name of the cells. So um, third defense is the acquired immunity. Those are the T and B cells, killer T, helper T, those things. I, I will explain briefly in, from the next slide. So natural immunity, that's the second defense mechanism. And we have this immunity when you are born, like it's naturally, you have it. And they, they start to work soon after we are born. It's like the frontline defense. Actually, I said it's second, but it's frontline defense inside of your body because most of them live under the skin or the near under the skin. So they can catch soon after the pathogens, which is germs come into your body. So these cells have a good appetite. It's really a uh, good appetite. They eat everything that foreign objects. They try to eat whatever. They don't like, they don't have a likes and dislikes. They eat. And they, but they become a slightly weaker uh, with aging. But it's not as the acquired immune cells, but it's slightly. If they fail to eat up all the pathogens, or the you know the pathogens is too many the germs, and they were successfully uh, go into your deeper areas of your body, like the organs and the cells, then the next defense group, defensing group, will kick in, which is adaptive or the acquired immunity. Uh, they are not fully functional soon after the birth. And they learn the way to fight each time when they encounter the pathogens. So I like to say the use of the word weapon, but they use that weapon called antibodies. They create the sort of custom made weapon for each pathogens to fight. So what happened is once the acquired immune cell uh, knows what they are fighting for, that they, they learn that they create create the antibody custom made. And uh, once they the cells created the certain uh, antibody, then they divide themselves and they make a specific group and they keep patrolling the body in the rest of your life. So once the same type of pathogen comes into your body next time, they recognize each other uh, right away and then fight with them because they have a weapon that works for that specific pathogen. So that's why once you, you had uh, measles once in your life, then you won't Cat, you catch, but you won't develop sickness or illness of the measles next time because those the acquired immune cells can kill the measles uh, virus. Okay, but however, the acquired immune cells will decline by aging. It's very unfortunate. But it's like, it is just like our physical strength or the vision and the hearing become weaker with aging. It's same thing. That cells function will become uh, weaker. The peak immunity, entire immunity is at the puberty for the human being. Puberty, the, the teenagers. And it is, it will fall down starting from about age 20s. And then when you are 40s, the, it is, you only have a 50% of the peak time. And then when you become 70s and over, only 10% remains 
in the body. So it, it is scary. Okay, another thing that we have to be careful is inflammation. Along with aging, we will be in a state of persistent chronic inflammation. It could be a mild and then you may not notice it, but you have a persistent inflammation state in your body. But sometimes it is it becomes noticeable, like arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and then you may have developed allergies, sensitive allergies, and when get you get older, or the cancer, heart disease, and then diabetes, it's sort of you know some kind some types of inflammation. So the characteristics of COVID-19 infection. The seriousness of COVID-19 infection was due to the abnormal effects of the immune system. That is the new finding that the scientists and doctors stu uh, studied and then found out. So first of all, I'd like to talk about the cytokine storm. I wonder if you have heard about cytokine storm. Uh, this is the one of the substance that the immune cells create. Do you remember that they create a weapon, like antibody? This is one of the antibody. And one of the cytokines is to induce the inflammation, to fight with the virus. So inflammation is needed uh, for some time, in some level, to fight the germs. But we have second type of the cytokine, which is suppressing the inflammation when they they think it, they fought enough and that they are winning. And then one of the cell says, okay, we got enough. So we, you don't need to create the uh, fighting cytokine anymore. So just suppress it. So that kind of order goes to the all cells. However, the problem with the COVID-19 virus is it breaks such functions, the balance. So there were too much inflammatory cytokines and then not enough suppressing cytokines found in uh, the patients who had a severe COVID-19 infection. Then what happened is the too much inflammation happens and it eventually attacks yourself, like uh, attacking the blood vessels, lung tissues, then the, they will damage yourself. Then you will end up the multi-organ failure. The mechanism of COVID-19 virus controlling cytokine is not known yet, but we know that it happens more often among people with weaker immune system, the immunity, such as seniors, and also the people with other chronic disease. So unfortunately, there is no quick solution to boost up your immunity, but the key is to maintain your good and healthy lifestyle. So those are the eight lists that I will explain one by one in the next few slides. The list of good, healthy food is popular now. So I'm sure you know this already. And I like to emphasize that eating balanced diet is most important than eating a lot of things that you heard that are good, for, good food. For example, uh, we hear like the blueberry is a good for you, but if you keep eating just the blueberries and then not eating other fruits, we may miss other important nutrition that blueberry does not have. So balanced diet is important. Another thing I want to emphasize is eat enough protein, such as meat, fish, and then beans, nuts. 
I often hear that elderly people say, I don't need to eat much meat anymore. Uh, that's for younger people's food. Younger people can eat more meat, but I can live with vegetables. My mother often said that, but actually uh, this is wrong. When you get older, you should take, you should eat more protein. The vitamins, many kinds of vitamins, A, B, C, D, E, they are all important. Minerals, folic acid, zinc, calcium, magnesium, they are all needed. Now, especially the zinc that I hear often that during COVID pandemic, that the zinc can boost your immunity. So zinc have got attention. But I would I want to say they are all needed. And it's important. So anti-inflammatory that I mentioned about the inflammation before. Um, do you remember that the inflammation causes the many kinds of health issues? So here is the list of the inflammation related food. So the in a blue box, it's, it is the food you want to take. The, it tends to suppress the inflammation. Tomato, green vegetable and fruits, like a, and the fish, like a sardine and a mackerel type of fish. Salmon could be okay too. Olive oil and the nuts, that's the omega-3 oils in there. It's very popular. Everybody knows those are the good food and you wanna increase in your diet. And in the uh, uh, orange the box, those are the food you want to avoid. Like uh, food with uh, refined wheat flour, which is, it tend to be the white color, like a white bread kind of thing. And also the refined sugar pop has a lot of sugar. You, can, you can't believe it, how much it has a sugar, so much. And then ready-made fried foods. Maybe it might be okay if you make your own fried food once in a while at home, but uh, ready-made, store-made fried food has uh, lots of bad things in there. And the margarine is one of them, uh, trans fat. And the processed meat, sausage, ham, again, homemade could be okay, but the store made cheap one has lots of things that uh, induce the inflammation. So uh, recent study found that 70% of immune cells are present around the intestine. So I like to talk about the in health, the intestine health here. So many pathogens enter the body through intestine wall. So by waiting up there, they can catch those pathogens, germs quickly and then destroy right away. I believe that uh, nowadays, last few years, you often hear the probiotic. That's the, the action that make your intestine healthy. Because in our intestine, we have some good bacteria we call flora living in there. And then they are working to maintain your health for everything, entire health. So by making those floras healthier, then the condition of the immune cells will also improve. How to make your uh, intestine flora healthier? It is the fiber again, the eat more fibers because fiber gonna be the food for the, those flora. And the fermentized, the fermented food like yogurt, cheese, um, some pickled vegetables and, uh, you know, the natto, the Japanese fermentized beans, and then fermentized cheese. Those are the good food for your intestine consequently 
consequently your entire health. Okay, dehydration is another problem I often see among seniors. So the immune cells will have a difficulty working if you are in if you are dehydrated. The first reason is there are tiny cilia that I posted here as a diagram. So those are the the cells. It's very enlarged, but it's your cells, cells in your uh, mucous membranes, like a windpipe in the nose. On the top of the cells, there are tiny, tiny hairs moving. It's constantly moving. The direction is from, from your inside of the body towards the outside. What they do is like they are trying to uh, move, move those foreign objects, including virus and bacteria, out uh, from your body to uh, the outside. If you are dry, those, the moving function of those hairs, the cilia, need uh, water or the fluid. So if you are dehydrated, this cilia, the hair, can't move smoothly or well enough. So then that means that when the virus comes into your body, goes easily, it goes through the nose and then the windpipe and goes into the lungs. Also, the second one is the dryness of the entire body. So the, those, some cells, the, the immune cells are circulating, like patrolling entire your body by uh, in the blood and the lymph stream, the blood vessels and the lymph nodes. Hmm? Yeah, lymph stream. If you are dehydrated and the blood become thicker, it won't be, it will be the difficult to move in the arteries or the veins. So you should be, de, you should be hydrated enough. You need to drink the small body, uh, the size person, uh, 1.5 liters and then medium person, then female 1.8 liters per day, and then bigger muscular person two to 2.5 liters. That's not only the water, but it can be uh, soup, it can be fruit, juice, juice in the fruits, jello, ice cream, yogurt, they are all considered as a fluid. So in total, you should take at least 1.5 milliliter, 1.5 cc for the seniors, at least. Okay, it's uh, the stress. Well, we all know that stress can lead to many kinds of illness. The, oh, yeah, the autonomic nervous system I hope you have heard about uh, a sympathetic, uh, sympathetic nervous system and a parasympathetic nervous system. <clears throat> they work counterway to control your body function. And the st having stress disturbs its function and it will make the immunity weaker actually. So, stress management. You have to find your best stress management strategy because my stress management strategy doesn't always work on you. The many ways, there are many ways to uh, manage your stress, but I really recommend you to find out your uh, best uh, stress control activity. Again, I think I don't need to mention, but it's yoga, meditation, walking, singing, puzzle, 
uh, watching movie, cooking, anything that you enjoy. And please continue that stress management uh, activity. And the many studies found that laughter, laughing make your immune cells to work more active. It is not expensive, easy to do. I wonder, have you laughed today? Think about from this morning to now. Did you smile? Did you laugh? It works, so please try to do it. Some interesting studies said even you, uh, even you are not funny, but you can try to laugh by yourself. But people around you make the, the think you're crazy. But when you're alone in your apartment, in your house, you just pretend that you are laughing. And that has a, some level of effects. That's what uh, some scientists say. But uh, do not uh, do too much and do not push yourself too much. That is gonna be another stress for you, for everything, for any uh, stress management control activity. And uh, don't wait until the stress make you uh, sick very seriously. Often you don't notice until you really become sick. So please pay attention to yourself and then talk to a doctor or the counselor earlier. Okay, sleep. Again, you know that the good sleep is good for you. But here I want to emphasize that uh, quality of the sleep. Right? So, well, first of all, I want to explain the why sleep is good for you. Uh, the while you are sleeping, the bo your body is repairing the damage for everything, all damage. Uh, it is good for wound healing and also for the immune cells. It helps immune cells to fight with pathogens. Uh, probably that's why when you have a flu or you're sick, you wanna sleep more because you wanna help your immunity, your immune cells to fight with pathogens more effectively. Yeah, again, not only uh, duration or time of sleeping, but the quality of sleeping should be considered. The tips for the good sleep, uh, you may know already, but let me uh, talk. The last food you eat should be at least three hours before sleep. When you become when you become older, you should not eat drink eat or drink right right before you go sleep anyway for many other reasons. And make a ritual to the bedtime and the sleeping time. Avoid exciting the shocking or the scary TV or movie or the book. Meditating to reset the unpleasant things that happen the day on the day is also a good technique to lead you to the good sleep. The lighting. Some people like sleeping in the dark. Some people like not too bright. Just to find out the best the light for you. And of course, the mattress and the pillow. It's easy to say. It may be difficult to find out the good mattress all the time. People say that you have to change mattress every 10 years, pillow every year, but find out the best one, best suits to you. It prevents your back ache, the neck ache as well. And then open the curtain or blind as soon as you wake up in the morning and then soak up the sunlight. It induces the sleepy feeling at night, usually after 16 hours of the day, by producing melatonin by yourself. Exercise, of course, that improve immunity as well. And the exercise is the best the remedy 
uh, compared to the medications because it has very limited side effects. So exercise side effects could be, uh, if you do too much, you're gonna have a muscle ache, but that's all. Uh, it's good for immunity. It improves blood flow and it raises and maintain your body temperature. And of course, stress relief. It's all good things happen. Uh, but the excessive exercise will temporarily weaken immunity. So if you do too much, your immune system will go uh, weaker temporarily. So uh, do the exercise that you feel good and then comfortable. So a little bit, do the little bit of exercise every day is the best for the immune system. Uh, walking 20 to 30 minutes is good for boost up your immunity and about four to seven times a week, meaning the three, four times a week to every day. And never push yourself to do too much. Stretching like yoga, Tai Chi is a good one too. And then don't forget to exercise, exercise to make your lower body muscle stronger. I will uh, tell you the uh, reason in the next slide. Maintaining body temperature. Uh, I just spoke about you know the body temperature while you do exercise. The exercise can keep your body temperature in the higher, the warmer. So some study found that when your body temperature drops by one degree, I think it's one Celsius degree, the immunity decreased by 30%. So that's why uh, you have, you tend to have a cold in the winter time. What's one of the reasons? So my mother or the you know, grandma always said that you should keep your body warm all the time. It was making sense. So when you become older, you tend to lose your muscle tone. The muscles contribute uh, heating up your body temperature. That's why the exercise and the maintaining your muscle tone is important as well. Uh, you should watch the living environment, such as too much air conditioning in the summer, for example, or the not enough feeding in the winter, those are the controllable, but please watch it. Unfortunately, when you get older, your sensor to feel hot or cold becomes less sensitive. So please note that. So a summary, it's too late to try to boost your immune when you become sick. So you should maintain your strong immune system all the time and consider the items you learn today and start from today to maintain the boost up your immunity. So that is the end of my uh, slide. Yeah, thank you.